Hello, all my kings and queens. Are you ready for our affirmation? Okay, here we go. I am the head. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am not the tail. I am above. I am above. I am not beneath. I am not beneath. I am a queen. I am a king. kings and queens oh my <sighs> look at our plant it's really growing just like we are here at the gospelology show i told you guys from that little bitty seed look what is happening oh i told you you'll see it every time you come and watch the gospelology show have you ever been at a festival or an event and lost one of your family members in the crowd oh <sighs> boy that's scary it reminds me of a story about a boy named Matthew who got lost while his family was doing some last minute Christmas shopping at the mall. You see, Matthew's family was terrified. Why do you think they were scared? Hmm. You see, all the family members went looking in different directions. And do you know where they found the little boy? Yes. Mm-hmm. Matthew was in the candy shop, y'all, looking at all the delicious candy. Mm-hmm. He didn't look lost at all. He didn't even know he was lost. <laughs> After all, he was in the candy store, right? And he was right where they left him. Mm-hmm. Right at the candy. Mm. It's funny, but it's not so funny. See, did the place Matthew was found surprise you? No? Why or why not? Think about it. Think about if you got lost, how would you feel? You see, this story of Matthew reminds me of a time when Jesus' parents lost him. Think about how it wasn't surprising that Matthew was found in a candy shop. Now think about what you know about Jesus. When Jesus was young, his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. And then after the feast was over, was over, Mary and Joseph were traveling back to their home when they realized Jesus was nowhere to be found. Mm -mm. When they couldn't find him, they turned around and went back to Jerusalem to look for him. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see that story right now. Are you ready? Here we go. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Kenneth. Any of y'all have siblings who are 12? I do. My 12-year-old brother thinks 12 is grown up. 12 sounds grown up, especially when you're a little guy. But to adults, 12 seems young, especially to be doing some of the things young Jesus was doing at that age. Like the time Jesus decided to stay on his own in Jerusalem. That was really something huge. In Luke 2, 41 to 52, it says Jesus had come to Jerusalem with his parents, Mary and Joseph, for the Passover festival. When it was time to go, 12-year-old Jesus stayed in the temple. His parents didn't miss him at first, they thought he was among the other travelers, but when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they found him in the temple, sitting among the religious leaders, listening to them and asking questions. Mary and Joseph were furious. Mary said, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been searching for you everywhere. Jesus said, Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But Mary and Joseph didn't understand what he meant. After that moment, he returned to Nazareth with them and followed their rules. His mom, Mary, kept all that young Jesus said hidden in her heart. Wow. Do you have a getting lost story? Let me know. Check you later. Man, it didn't surprise me at all when they found Jesus. Mm -mm. They found him right in the temple. You see... Like Matthew, Jesus wasn't terrified, worried, or frightened when his parents found him. He said to them, 
Why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? That's like Matthew said, don't you know I gotta be in the candy store? <laughs> Do you ever feel like you lose touch with Jesus though? See, sometimes we get so busy that we stop thinking about Jesus or spending time with him. The good news is we can always find him. Yeah, just like Matthew's parents found him and like Jesus' parents found him. Maybe reconnecting with Jesus means stopping to pray and going to church or reading your Bible. When we go looking for Jesus, he'll be right there waiting for us. That's right. Why don't you just say this prayer? Dear Jesus, when I have lost sight of you, help me remember that you are still there waiting for me to come back to you. Help me to make you find a daily place in my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Say those words. Just remind yourself that you have to have Jesus with you every day because I don't want you to lose him because he's never lost you. Well, like Promac told us earlier, we're going to see Promac go into the laboratory, that's right, and do an amazing experiment where she's going to go from darkness to light, from light to darkness. That's how we feel sometimes when we get lost, right? See, feel kind of dark. And then we're gonna have great praise and worship music too. I can't wait to get into all of the things that we're gonna do today. But I want you to remember, the Coding Academy has started! And we're so excited and we wanna see you over there. All you have to do is go to gospelologyclub.com. That's right, go to the top, click on Coding Academy, and check out Spacewalk and all of the great lessons that he has planned for you. That's right, Python, Roblox, JavaScript, all of those great things, Scratch, for you to learn all about coding and all about the different tribes of Israel. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for praise and worship right now. Are you? I am too. So let's head on over there and then get ready to see Promac in the laboratory deal with this darkness and lightness and talk about being lost. See you next week. Sing this word. It sounds like music in my ear. 
the sweetest name on earth It tells me of the Savior's love who died to set me free It tells me of his precious blood to send us perfectly Shut up! Well, a gospelologist is just someone who studies the gospel of Jesus Christ with a little scientific twist. Well, let's get started. When we get started today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn all about our scientists in residence. That's right. Each week when Promac comes on, she's going to introduce you to a great scientist. Would you like to know who they are today? All right, here we go. Hi, this is Janelle with this week's scientists in residence. This week's scientist in residence is Gladys West. Now, I'm kind of confused because I don't know which way I'm supposed to go and I'm kind of trapped. Maybe Gladys West can help me figure it out. Now, let's take a look at her video. Today, we're learning about Gladys West. Gladys West's work was instrumental in developing the mathematics behind GPS. GPS allows us to use our phones to travel from one location to another without getting lost. Let's say you're on your way home from school and you get confused about which direction to go. Your GPS can help you make it home safely. Let's learn about Gladys West. On October 27, 1930, Gladys was born in Sutherland, Virginia. Her mother worked at a tobacco factory. Her father was a farmer and worked for the railroad. At a young age, Wes focused on education to avoid working in the tobacco fields or factories. Gladys graduated from high school in 1948 as valedictorian. She graduated from Virginia State College in 1952 with a Bachelor's of Science in Mathematics. In 1956, West was hired at the Naval Proving Ground as the second black woman hired. She was also one of four black employees. Gladys West's data became the basis for the Global Positioning System, or the GPS. On her contributions to society, Gladys West said, when you're working every day, you're not thinking about what impact 
is this going to have on the world? Instead, you're thinking, I've got to get this right. Gladys was inducted into the Air Force Space and Missile Pioneers Hall of Fame at the Pentagon. Gladys West changed the world. With GPS, we are able to find our way home or to other locations without getting lost. The next time you use GPS on your phone, when you're out on the go, be sure to thank Gladys West. Yes, a GPS, that's exactly what I need. This week's scientist in residence is Gladys West. And the crowd goes wild! <laughs> Back to you, Bill Matt, for the lesson. Well, hello all my kings and queens out there in internet and TV land. Oh, Promac is so excited that you're joining her today in her laboratory. And boy, do I have a great science experiment for you today. I have just been so inspired by Miss Latrice's lessons. Oh, and today when she talked about being lost, oh, and how we can just get lost sometimes and not have Jesus because we don't read our Bibles every day or pray every day. And we talked about the little boy, Matthew, who got lost. And then we talked about Jesus who got lost. Oh, everybody was just getting lost. I felt so dark because that's how I feel sometimes when I get lost. Yeah, I feel like it's darkness, darkness and I can't see light. Yeah, and so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to do something in my laboratory today that is a solution that is suddenly plunged into darkness. That's right, and I'm going to use starch. Yeah, you see, starch is something that I'm going to mix up. I'm going to make a starch formula, and when I mix it up, what we're going to notice is that starch will just sit there if there's no iodine present. So I'm going to share a little bit about that with you right now. So what I have right here is some starch. That's right. Starch is like baking soda, so to speak, or it can be like cornstarch. You know cornstarch, that's in your kitchen. Yeah, I bet you got some in your cabinet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a starch solution right here in my cup. I'm gonna take one of my spoons and I'm gonna pour um, a big spoon of starch right inside my cup. There you go, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some hot water and look what I have here, my Gospelology cup. That's right, and I'm going to take some hot water and pour it right in here. And I'm going to pour it up to the line right at the top of my indicator of hot water. Woo, right there, see? Oop, I made a little mess there. But you can see, ah, look what happened to my indicator. It actually says it got hot. Did y'all see my indicator turn to yellow to show that it's hot water. And now what I'm gonna do is mix it up for 30 seconds. That's 15. Make sure I get it all good. You wanna make sure I get all of the starch up and all of the powder mixed into the water, okay? And I think I did a pretty good job. What do you guys think? And I think I did a good job kings and queens. What do you think? Yeah. So that is our starch solution. So we're going to put that to the side. And then I have my beaker here. And inside my beaker, oh, let's move our little growth plant so that you can actually see the beaker. There's my beaker. I'm going to take one pipette and I'm going to squeeze the whole thing up. There you go. And I'm going to put my whole pipette inside my beaker, just like that, okay? And then what I'm going to do is take 10 drops of my sodium thiosulfate. 
That's right. We used that in our last experiment last week when we fogged up our little petri dish with the fire, with the little snowman. You remember that? Okay. So I'm going to put actually 10 drops. Oh, my little top came off. But I'm going to use 10 drops of my sodium thiosulfate. There you go. Okay, you ready? Let's count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there's ten drops. Then what I'm going to use is I'm actually going to take right here my potassium iodide. Remember, we're trying to detect starch. So we have some potassium iodide. And we're going to take that and we're going to use one big spoon of potassium iodide. Here's my big spoon. So we're going to fill my big spoon up. And I'm going to pour the potassium iodide right in there. The potassium iodide on the periodic table is Ki. That's right, boys and girls, Ki. Okay, so now I have in my beaker some thiosulfate. Remember, I got my sodium thiosulfate in there. And then I also have now my actual potassium iodide, Ki, inside here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water and I'm going to fill it inside my actual cup here, my beaker here, and I'm going to pour a hundred milliliters. Did I get it on my, hey, Promac is a pro at this. So there is a hundred milliliters of water right there, okay? And then what I'm going to do now is I am actually gonna pour in my iron chloride. That's right, iron chloride, which is FeCl3 on the periodic table when you actually mix it all together and you get the chemicals. And what I'm going to do is use one big teaspoon and put it inside my water. So let's fill up that one big teaspoon and put it inside my water, just like that. Okay, so now my water is yellow. Isn't that something? Okay, and I'm gonna close it up. And I'm gonna move my starch solution over here and clean up my area and put it inside my science sink. Yeah, because now all I need is our two different mixtures. So you remember, we, our beaker here was filled with the actual sodium thiosulfate, and it was also filled with potassium iodide, right? And then this one was actually filled with some water and iron chloride. Now, what Promac is going to do now is I'm actually gonna pour this inside of this and let's see what happens. Wow. Boys and girls, kings and queens, let's see if it's actually going to detect the chloride. Let's see what happens. <gasps> Whoa! Did you guys see what just happened? <laughs> it just went totally black. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so amazing. I think that kind of scared pro them for a second. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to react so quickly. Wow. Well, you know what? Young kings and queens, that's what kind of happens so quickly when you don't know Jesus. Hooey! You got to know him right on the spot because you never know when you're really, really going to need him. I need him every day, but sometimes I need him even more. But I sure would like to know what happened and how that happened. If you're ready to find that out, let's go on over to Promac and see what she has to say about it. You ready? Here we go. Wow, wasn't that an amazing experiment in the laboratory? How you seen that just plunge right in the darkness? Oh my goodness, what I really loved about it, kings and queens, was that initially not much seems to be going on, remember? 
but a whole host of processes were churning up away under the hood. That's right, inside there, there was stuff going on that you didn't even notice. Mm -hmm. What had happened was, was see, we had that iron, that's right, the iron, it was taking electrons actually from the potassium. Yeah, it was actually sucking it up. <laughs> it was so cool. And it was actually producing something called I2. That's right, because it put two electrons together and it made two more. See, these I2 molecules, they have no time to bind with the starch. You remember the starch that I made? Mm-hmm, because what happened, I actually put the sodium thiosulfate in there too. Mm-hmm, and it started to quickly turn them back into ion. In a sense, what was happening was the iron was actually fighting with the actual sodium thiosulfate. Mm-hmm, and when they were fighting for the iodine attention, it actually went Boom, because the actual um, sodium thiosulfate took the lead and it just said, oh, I'm gonna take this over. And then boom, it just plunged into darkness. Well, boys and girls, that's what I don't want to happen to you. Mm -mm. I don't want you to get so caught up in the world that you don't even know what's going on sometimes. And then you just get caught up in all the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just sucks you up. It may not seem like anything is going on at the moment, but actually, all these things are taking over your mind and your thoughts. You got all these video games and you got all this music and all of these things are happening and the process is going on right under the hood in your head and you don't even know it. And then all of a sudden, boom, you just plunged into darkness. I don't want that to happen to you. And there's some way that you won't if you let Jesus be your forever friend. That's right, all you gotta do is A, admit that you have sinned, and then B, believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and then C, choose and confess. That's right, choose Jesus to be your forever friend, and then confess that he is Lord. Promac wants to do that with you today. Can I pray that prayer with you today? All right, let's go. Hello God, it's me Promac, and I just wanted to share with you these boys and girls who wanna make Jesus their forever friend. So today, God, they A, admit that they have sinned, and then they B, believe that your son Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and then they C, choose and confess. They choose to Jesus to be their forever friend, and they confess that he is Lord. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us science today and helping us be Jesus's forever friend. We love you, and we promise that we'll talk to you again before the end of the day. In your precious son Jesus' name we pray, amen.